Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basil. Jason Levine. And today we're looking at an expansion for the Manhattan Project, Energy Empire. Not an expansion. No, but if you see the front of this box, you might think so. This is not an expansion, this is its own game. Now last week, Z and Sam gave you their opinions on Energy Empire, but in case you didn't watch that one, and also we just wanted to give like a wide variety of opinions because Z likes short games, Sam likes themed games. I'm more of a middler and, and you I like, like heavy strategy. So what do you think we think about the game? Let's take a look. Now remember that this is not a finished product. This is really close. This is the final artwork. This is a hand cut one, so it's almost what you're going to get. Each player has their own player board that they'll be starting with as the game goes by. You're going to be keeping track of your points along the outside. Players are going to pick a nation out of two cards that are given to them. One of the cards is going to be flipped over and used as a reference card. Other than that, they're going to pick one of the different countries of the world. Each country gets a different number of starting resources, so America gets two money, a science and three oil, while China gets an extra worker. Plastics and steel, Iraq gets four oil and four money. You can see some, some countries even get a die that they'll start with. So players are going to take their starting resources. You keep all your resources down here at the bottom of your board, and any dice you get you'll keep over here. Now the point of this game is to get the most points, and you're going to get points at the end of the game for not having pollution covered up. So pollution is going to be filling up these spaces, but you can see they're worth points if they're not covered, and each of these columns at the end will also give you points if there's no pollution in that column. Each die that you have is going to give you points at the end of the game. You're also going to get points uh, during the game, and there's a United Nations track down here that each person will have a piece on, and who you'll get points for how far you get on that, and whoever gets the farthest on that track will get an additional three points. Finally, there are some achievement tiles. Players will start with one of these, but they can get more as the game goes by. These give a maximum of five points, like this one here gives one for each nuclear contamination in your environment. This one here gives you an extra point for each unpolluted ocean space in your environment. Now, players are going to start with some workers. Usually they'll start with three, but they might start with four if they have a country that does that. Their workers are going to be placed here on their board, and they're also going to start with a couple energy that's placed on their board. And you just start with one person, and you go around the board. Now, on your turn, you're going to either place workers or you're going to pull workers off the board. Now, when you place workers on the board, you are going to place a worker in any spot on you want. There's 13 spots on the board. Each spot shows a worker. If there already is a worker there of someone else's color, you can still go there. You just have to add energy tokens to your worker to go there. So I need to add one here. Although I could add two even if I wanted to, just to make it harder for the next person to go there. Now, when players go to these different spots, what do they do? Some of them just give resources. This here gives a... And a steel. This here lets you, um, this gives a science and it lets you look at one of these global impact cards at the bottom. This one lets you spend three dollars to take a worker and cause pollution. This lets you clean up pollution twice. Here you can oil drill to get three oil. Here you can change an oil for one pollution, a science, two plastics. Here you take money. The more money you take, you also give money to other players. Here you can buy or sell oil depending on the price down here, whichever round it is. And here you can trade things. At the top, you can buy a building. At the top of each building is a cost. You can either pay money for that building or a resource, science, um, uh, steel, or plastics. When you buy a building, that building is placed in front of you, and any time you take an action, that's the same color as that building. So if I take an action over here in the government area, I can also activate buildings in front of me. Each building can be activated by workers or energy. You can't put energy by itself out on the board, but you can to activate these. This one here requires two to activate it. This one only requires one, but can be activated twice. So you can see this one here gives a steel and a science. This one gives a science unless you look at a card just like the scientific research. This one has a steel and a science. This one gives you an oil and two money. This one here lets you get money equal to the current price of oil. So there's all sorts of buildings that are out there. Now, players can also go down here and buy dice. There are four different types of dice. We have solar wind, hydrogeo, you can only have one of those, coal, and nuclear. Now, on your turn, instead of placing a worker, you can generate. What that does is it pulls all your workers off the board. If you have any energy left over, you need to discard all that energy. 
Um, players are then going to uh, refine oil if they want to. For each oil up to four that they decide to get rid of, they are going to take a brown oil die. They're also going to take any other dice that they may have collected. So let's say I already had three dice. I decide to spend one oil for this. You're going to roll the dice and you're going to look at the number of energy symbols on these dice and that's how much energy you get for the next rounds as you place workers. So here I'm getting a lot of energy. I'm getting seven energy. You then look at, at the numbers on the dice and the highest number. So in this instance, the highest number is four, that's going to cause a pollution. If the highest number had been the green die, I would have gotten no pollution, but I still would have taken a pollution from here. Whenever you take pollution, it comes from over here, unless the card says otherwise. So this, even if you take no pollution, one of these comes off, and this is a way to trigger the end of the game. Now, as you're taking pollution, you have to put the pollution on your board. You can also cover up spots on your board by drilling for oil in those different areas. And oil can only be drilled for knees. As you put pollution on, it's obviously going to make you get fewer points as time goes by. Uh, you can get rid of pollution by spending a, a clean, uh, this recycling symbol lets you get rid of pollution. If you get nuclear pollution, that's worse than regular pollution. It takes one cleaning to turn it to regular pollution, then another cleaning to get rid of it. So you got to keep an eye out for this. You can pollute pretty quickly as time goes by and cover up these spots. When the last token is removed from here, the global impact card is turned over. The first thing is we look at the row here and everyone immediately scores points for each open spot in that row. You then will recycle one of the groups of cards. This one shows the green cards get recycled. And so three new cards are going to come out over here. And then some event happens. Like here, each player may drill for oil. Um, the next one here... Uh, until another card is uh, triggered, players can discard science tokens for one victory point each. And over here, um, each player can take one of their workers and put it on this card. That worker's on that card, so you play a science to release that worker. So these cards, are sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're positive. They will cause some sort of impact. When you pull your workers off the board, you also, if you have two or more workers or energy still on your board when you do that, you can also take another achievement tile from the three that are face up here which is then replaced. And that's basically it. You're going to keep going until the last global impact has been triggered. At that point, there's one final round. You will then add up your points and you win. But you say, wait a minute, you didn't mention the United Nations track. That's right. Each person has a nation. And whenever you take any action on the board, you can activate this with a worker energy, just like a building. And you can spend whatever it shows on here to move one spot on the United Nations track. There can be multiple people per spot, except for the last spot. The first one to get there is the only person who can go to that spot. That's the game. Well, there you go. Uh, Energy Empire has a few things in common with Manhattan Project, where they got the name from. The one is place a worker out or pull them all back. And it also has buildings in front of you can give you extra actions on your turn if you want to. But other than that, it really is a completely different game. Yes. So I'm not going to mention Manhattan Project anymore. I just want to talk about this game in and of itself. This game was shorter than I thought it would be when we went over the rules. Yes, me too. It's an, It says on the box, it says one to two hours. It's pretty close to one hour. I yes. mean, maybe a little bit more than an hour, but this game is not that long. And that's a good thing. This game moves along pretty well. And your goal in this game is to get resources. And by the way, I should mention here that the, uh, this is a reminder I mentioned in the rules thing, but this is not a complete version. This is a kind of a preview beta version, but the components are almost, com almost finished here. Yeah. And I love having little barrels and little things. I like collecting all that, but I liked how everything was very simple. This building said, collect this, you collect it, you then use it over here. It was not a game where you had to think really hard about, all right, I need to use this to get that, to get this, to get that. No, you know what you need. Science, get rid of pollution. Steel, build buildings. Plastic, build other buildings. Money and oil, you can use this for a variety of things. Um, what did you think of the theming of this game? I think the theming is great. I mean, in the first game, they were doing making bombs. This one, you're doing taking care of the environment. And you're taking care of it in different ways. <laughs> Well, you may not be taking care of the environment. I okay, think you may be is, polluting. Uh, you're dealing with the environment, yeah, whether you take dealing. care of it or not. I, I was green and energy conscious. He was 
Pollution Crazy. In Actually, I've played <laughs> Pollution Crazy every time I play this game, and I have lost, but I have also won that way too. I, <laughs> um, but but yeah, so the theming is about that. Yes, and and go green. Um, <laughs> no, the theming's great in this. I think that the different dice and the way you could get them and getting your energy is another great thing because you know your different energy is going to give you more energy so obviously if you're using a lot of oil you're going to have more energy than if you're green but you have cleaner energy so you don't have to worry about pollution in your environment and you're making choices very tough choices about what you're going to do but it really really themes well and it balances into the game as well in the fact that you know you have your different your different green or your different this, but how much energy you're going to have will allow you to go into the same space as someone else. And that's one of the things that I really like about this that they added in is that you could put your worker and then have energy underneath it to go into the same space as someone else. So you're not locked out. And unlike other worker placement games where you get locked out of a space, here you can stack and go into the same space as someone else, which gives you a lot more freedom, a lot more things to do. Right, and the energy is interesting because it's kind of like a half of a worker where it can make workers better out there, but you can also use it on your own buildings. So getting a lot of energy is useful, but having workers is important too. Although unlike most worker placement games, in this one, having a lot of workers does not guarantee you the victory. Like many worker placement games, when, I, when someone teaches the rules, the first thing I think about is I sit there and I go, how do I get more workers? I don't know if you do that, but I definitely do that. I'm oh, thinking, I do. I how do. do I get more workers? All right, and this one, there's one way to get workers. Well, there's a couple ways from some buildings, but there's one main way to get workers, and you're thinking, I don't need workers yet, right? Because it gives you pollution. Yes. You, don't, you can win just with the starting workers you have. Yes, yes. I mean, realistically, it's how do I get more energy? And the dice rolling and getting those dice to get more rolls, I think, is one of the keys to the game. And the, yeah, but I also like that the game offers some very different strategies. You can... You can buy more dice. You can go for the things. And each of those, the, the different uh, the buildings? achievements. Oh, yes. And each of those things is, are useful, but I like how they cap them. So, yeah, you want to build a whole bunch of buildings. That's great. But there's no building that's going to be worth more than five points. You want an achievement? That's great. But no achievement's going to be worth more than five points. So it doesn't feel like any one way is more powerful than the others. Even the environment, which is you can get points all throughout the game for the environment. That's great. But if you're keeping your environment clean... You're not doing a lot of other stuff because you're kind Correct. of you're kind of emphasizing on that environment. Yeah, you're not you're not going to the UN or which is also a way to get points. There's so many ways to get points, and you have to choose which ones you want to do because you can't do them all. Well, you can do them all, but you can't do them all well, maybe. Yeah. Um, so uh, the I like I said, it's pretty simple. There's very, there's only a few buildings that have text on them. Most of the buildings are get this, get points. The different countries are a minor way to be different when you start. Which and asymmetrical is, is kind of cool. I mean, I like asymmetrical starts in games. It is, and it's not a huge asymmetrical. I mean, yes, you de definitely have different starting resources, but as the game goes by, you can still play, for example, you can play Iraq and still go green if you want. Exactly. You start with that oil, but that doesn't mean you. every time you get oil, you can say, I'm using oil for the United Nations, and I'm going to concentrate on science and do that. You, you can do that, so you're not tied into any strategy with the country. But I like that the countries are there because it's fun to, to like maybe you can role play the countries a little bit. And stuff. Exactly, exactly. And you could do what the countries would do. So what's your awesomeness rating here for Energy Empire? On this one, it's an 8. I liked it a lot. I think it's a great game. And I think it actually is better than the Manhattan Project. Whew. Yeah, it is. Although, I, I wonder if the Manhattan Project might have some more depth to it than this one, possibly. But I like the dice in this one. I like the way that the workers place here. I, I like the, the speed and simplicity of it, and I like the theming uh, involved with it. I might give this one an 8.5, actually. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with this game. Uh, I can't wait to see a final version of it. Like I said, this one's almost final version, and probably will go in my collection. I know it's going in yours, right? Oh, yeah, it's going to go in my collection for sure. Well, there you go. That's Energy Empire. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.
Bum 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 bum. Ba da 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 bum.